we need to talk about using parameters in functions. In Python, a parameter is an object that is included in a function definition for use in that function. Parameters are accepted into a function through the parentheses after a function name. Now, let's revisit another function called range that does use parameters. If you recall, the range function generates a sequence of numbers from a start point to the value before the stop point. Therefore, range does include parameters for the start and stop indices that each accept an integer value. For instance, it could accept integers 3 and 7. This means the sequence it generates will run from 3 to 6. In our previous example, we wrote a function that displayed a welcome message when someone logged in. It would be even more welcoming if we included the employee's name with the message. Let's define a function with a parameter so we can greet employees by name. When we define our function, we'll include the name of the parameter that our function depends on. We place this parameter, the name variable, inside the parentheses. The rest of the syntax stays the same. Now, let's go to the next line and indent so that we can tell Python what we want this function to do. We want it to print a message that welcomes the employee using the name that's passed into the function. Bringing this variable into our print statement requires a few considerations. Like before, we start with the welcome message we want to print. In this case, though, we're not stopping our message after we tell them they're logged in. We want to continue and add the employee's name to the message. That's why we're placing a comma after you're logged in. And then adding the name variable. Since this is a variable and not a specific string, we don't place it in quotation marks. Now that our function is set up, we're ready to call it with a specific argument that we want to pass in. In Python, an argument is the data brought into a function when it is called. For example, earlier when we passed 3 and 7 into the range function, these were arguments. In our case, let's imagine we want to greet an employee named Charlie Patel. We'll call our greet employee function with this argument. And when we run this, Charlie Patel gets a personalized welcome message. In this example, we only have one parameter in our function, but we can have more. Let's explore an example of this. Maybe instead of a single name parameter, we have a parameter for first name and second parameter for last name. If so, we would need to adjust the code like this. First, when we define the function, we include both parameters and separate them with a comma. Then, when we call it, we also include two arguments. This time, we're greeting someone with the first name of Kiara and with the last name of Carter. These are also separated by a comma. Let's run this and welcome Kiara Carter. As we just explored, Using more than one parameter just requires a few adjustments. Great work in this video. We learned a lot about working with parameters in a function. This understanding is something you'll need as you continue to write Python scripts. We can do more than pass information into a function. We can also send information out of one. Return statements allow us to do this. A return statement is a Python statement that executes inside a function and sends information back to the function call. This ability to send information back from a function is useful to a security analyst in various ways. As one example, an analyst might have a function that checks whether someone is allowed to access a particular file and will return a Boolean value of true or false to the larger program. We'll explore another example. 
let's create a function related to analyzing login attempts. Based on the information it takes in, this function will compute the percentage of failed attempts and return this percentage. The program could use this information in a variety of ways. For example, it might be used to determine whether or not to lock an account. So let's get started and learn how to return information from a function. Just like before, we start by defining our function. We'll name it calculate fails. And we'll set two parameters related to login attempts, one for total attempts and one for failed attempts. Next, we'll tell Python what we want this function to do. We want this function to store the percentage of failed attempts in a variable called fail percentage. We need to divide fail attempts by total attempts to get this percentage. So far, this is similar to what we learned previously. But now, let's learn how to return the fail percentage. To do this, we need to use the keyword return. Return is used to return information from a function. In our case, we'll return the percentage we just calculated. So after the keyword return, we'll type fail percentage. This is our variable that contains this information. Now, we're ready to call this function. We'll calculate the percentage for a user who has logged in four times with two failed attempts. So our arguments are four and two. When we run this, the function returns the percentage of failed attempts. It's 0.5 or 50%, but in some Python environments, this might not be printed to the screen. We cannot use the specific variable named fail percentage outside of the function. So in order to use this information in another part of the program, we would need to return the value from the function and assign it to a new variable. Let's check this out. This time, when the function is called, the value that's returned is stored in a variable called percentage. Then we can use this variable in additional code. For example, we can write a conditional that checks if the percentage of failed attempts is greater than or equal to 50%. When this condition is met, we can tell Python to print an account locked message. Let's run this code. And this time, the percentage isn't returned to the screen. Instead, we get the account locked message. Coming up, we'll discuss more functions, but this time we'll go over a few that are ready for use and built into Python. Now that we know how to create our own functions, let's also explore a few of Python's built-in functions. As we discussed previously, built-in functions are functions that exist within Python and can be called directly. Our only job is to call them by their name. And we already described a few throughout the course. For example, Python's print and type functions. Let's quickly review those two built-in functions before learning about new ones. First, print outputs a specified object to the screen. And then the type function returns the data type of its input. Previously, we've been using functions independently from one another. For example, we ask Python to print something or we ask Python to return the data type of something. As we begin to explore building functions, we'll often need to use multiple functions together. We can do this by passing one function into another as an argument. For example, in this line of code, Python first returns the data type of hello as a string. Then this return value is passed into the print function. This means the data type of a string will be printed to the screen. Print and type are not the only functions you'll see used together in this way. In all cases, the general syntax is the same. The inner function is processed first, and then its return value is passed to the outer function. Let's consider 
another aspect of working with built-in functions. When working with functions, you have to understand what their expected inputs and outputs are. Some functions only expect a specific data types and will return a type error if you use the wrong one. Other functions need a specific amount of parameters or return a different data type. The print function, for example, can take in any data type as its input. It can also take in any number of parameters, even ones with different data types. Let's explore the input and output of the print function. We'll enter three arguments. The first contains a string data. Then, a comma is used to separate this from the second argument. This second argument is an integer. Finally, after another comma, our third argument is another string. Now, let's run this code. Perfect. This printed out just as expected. The type function also takes in all data types, but it only accepts one parameter. Let's explore this input and output too. Our first line of code will first determine the data type of the word security, and then pass what it returns into a print function. And the second line of code will do the same thing with the value of 73.2. Now, Let's run this and see what happens. Python first returns output that tells us that the word security is a string data. Next, it returns another line of output that tells us that 73.2 is float data. Now, we know what to consider before using a built-in function. We have to know exactly how many parameters it requires and what data types they can be. We also need to know what kind of output it produces. Let's learn a couple of new built-in functions and think about this. We'll start with max. The max function returns the largest numeric input passed into it. It doesn't have a defined number of parameters that it accepts. Let's explore the max function. We'll pass three arguments into max in the form of variables. So let's first define those variables. We'll set the value of a to 3, b to 9, and c to 6. Then we'll pass these variables into the max function and print them. Let's run this. It tells us the highest value among those is 9. Now, let's study one more built-in function, the sorted function. The sorted function sorts the components of a list. This function can be very useful in a security setting. When working with lists, we often have to sort them. With lists of numbers, we sort them from smallest to largest, or the other way around. With lists of string data, we might need to sort them alphabetically. Imagine you have a list that contains usernames in your organization and you want it to sort them alphabetically. Let's use Python sorted function for this. We'll specify our list through a variable named usernames. In this list, we'll include all of the usernames we want to sort. Now, we'll use the sorted function to sort these names by passing the usernames variable into it. And then we'll pass its output into the printed statement so it can be displayed on the screen. And when we run it, everything is now in order. These are just a few of the building functions available for your use. As you work more in Python, you'll become familiar with others that can help you in your programs.